Okay. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, the first section I have of lecturing should hopefully be a little bit shorter, and then I'll do some more live coding today as well. And then we're going to spend the second lecture of this week uh, on Friday reviewing uh, concepts from last week and concepts from this week and talking about some of the science from the solar physics. Um, we're also going to have a review session on Thursday, particularly for people who still haven't mastered uh, concepts from last week. Um, and for those people, there'll be a different capstone exercise this week. Um, so it's, it'll help us all get on the same page so that we can do more science um, with the techniques that we've learned so far. Um, so you might have seen that uh, some of these concepts are hard to master. Uh, that's why we're introducing them, doing them in labs, and then reviewing them quite a lot. Um, so we'll get there by the end of the course. Um, and uh, essentially, after this section of the lecture, um, this will be kind of all the basics that we'll need. Um, so let's get started. Um, Python modules are groupings of code that we can put together to get things done. We've already seen these. Um, these groups have to be imported before they can be used, and that helps ensure that the code isn't filled with symbols um, and words that aren't part of the Python language itself, which would make it even harder to learn or track down what's going on. With the import structure, it's easy to see where the code is coming from and to isolate um, uh, which module it's coming from. So you, you might have seen something like this. We've worked with the NASA API. We've now worked with SumPy. Um, so from math, import square root, S-Q-R-T, which means that just after this, we can use square root without the math dot before it. Um, you can also import every single function in a module with this star notation. Star acts like a wild card. It matches anything. So from math, import star means import everything from math. Um, the problem is, is that if we do from A, import star, from B, import star, from C, import star, and then call a function called funny, it's hard to figure out where funny came from. Did it come from module A? Did it come from module B? Did it come from module C? And as well, if there's a function called funny, if we end up calling a variable funny, it can result in confusing things. Um, so we've already seen in some of the lab exercises, there's a class called constant with a capital C. And if you end up calling a variable, that same class, Python will get confused. Um, so it is the case that you don't want to have name collisions. It's the same thing as if I say um, President Bush. If I don't specify which president it is, there's two presidents. Bushes. That's why we have President George W. Bush or President George Bush Sr. So people have to be more specific. And it's, it's pardon? That there's two President Bushes? Or? Yeah, there was the father and then the son. Yeah, there were almost two President Clintons as well. But, okay. Um, so that's why people. Um, usually do something more clear. So from B, import funny. We know funny came from B. That's where it's defined. Or you can say import B, um, but later you need to go B.funny to indicate that um, funny, the, the function, is coming from the B module. Uh, no matter which one you choose, you can choose any of these methods. Um, you can see, uh, when you look at other people's code, you'll see any of these things. Sometimes people do the star thing if they just have a small bit of code and they know whatever they code isn't going to interfere with the module and they just want to test if something's working. But if you have a bug in your code, uh, it can be good to help track it down if you um, are more specific about where you're getting your functions from. Um, we've also seen modules that have modules with inside them. Um, so in essence, uh, when we go to learn how to install our own modules, the way it works is that um, you have a bit of Python code, and you have a directory that's filled with different bits of Python code. Each file has 
um, different chunks of functions that are useful or other things that are useful. And then when you go import, it says check that file and check all the functions within that file um, to see if it has this function here. Um, so uh, the, the module can also be accessed within a dot. Um, so we've seen this pattern also with the methods before. So dot basically means um, inside of this. So the same thing with the method. Uh, we had a dot syntax and calling the method. The, the method applies to the object before it. And here with this module, it is a sub-module of this one. For now, when we're working with modules, um, we'll tell you exactly how to import what you need to import. But when you go ahead and do your project, you might decide to work with a module that we haven't trained you how to use. Um, and so you'll need to figure out uh, what in the module or sub-module that you need for your code and how to get that accessible. So that's why there's these lecture slides um, as well for reference if you read something and it has to do with importing modules, you can go back to this chapter or to these lecture slides and refer to it. So it isn't important that you memorize all this, but this is all here for your reference. Um, Python has many inbuilt modules, modules available with every installation of Python without you having to do anything else. You don't have to do pip install, you don't have to do anything. Um, you can see them here, uh, and these are on the web, these slides. Um, we've also learned how to install and work with external modules. Um, so we've done both. I will show you uh, next chapter a few inbuilt modules in Python that are very useful. Um, this is another thing you'll see with modules. Sometimes when you're using a module frequently, except especially with a long name, it's annoying to type. So you could imagine if someone named a module, my super long module name is super long, uh, you might not want to type that every single time. Uh, so you can give the module another name. Um, so that's this as super useful. So now super useful is the same thing as my super long module name is super long. Um, so from then on, you only have to type super useful dot, whatever it is that you want um, to do. So you might see that as well. And again, these aren't things that you have to have memorized. It's good to have seen it once so that if you ever have a problem with modules, you can refer back to this and say, what's going on here? This is exactly what's going on. Um, there are a variety of modules that come from other developers. A package manager is an easy way to obtain an external monitor module. The package manager we'll use for Python packages in this course is called PIP. Um, and how I remember it is Python install program. I don't know if it actually stands for anything, but that's how I remember it. And we've already seen this. Uh, we have PIP 3.5 install user NASA API wrapper. Um, and I'll break this down a little bit. We've already seen it, but just what exactly is going on here. Um, we always type a 3.5 after pip to make sure it installs packages for the user, the uh, version of Python that we're using. In addition, we don't want to, and moreover on your accounts, you aren't even allowed to install a package for everyone who might ever use the computer. So we put a dash dash user in front of, um, in, uh, after install in front of the module. Uh, to tell PIP 3.5 to install only for you. Um, whenever we install a new software package, we'll do so from the bash, bash console, not within Python itself. Everything else we're doing so far is within Python. Um, so I did notice that some people were getting the bash console and uh, the IPython console a little mixed up. It's just right now for installing software that we're using the bash console. Everything else, your exercises, et cetera, um, are in the IPython console or in the notebook. Um, later we're going to learn how to download the code for a module and install it ourselves. That's useful if you want to make modifications of the module, um, if you want to use a more up-to-date version than the one available the easy way from the package manager, or if the automatic installation fails for some reason. Any of these things could be the case. We will also learn how to build our own modules. Um, that'll be the last week where um, will make a very simple module and import it. And this is a way that once you uh, make a contribution, you make a good Python piece of software, you can share it. Um, 
and other people can use it. It's also a way that if you write a lot of code, if you don't want to all have it in the same file, you can move it in different places and use it elsewhere. Um, so I'm going to talk now about a couple more modules that we're going to work with in the second part of the notebook problems this week. Uh, one is the NumPy module, and what we're going to use it for are NumPy arrays. Uh, NumPy is a popular module for doing any scientific computing and data analysis that many Python users choose to install. It doesn't come with Python, um, but it is already installed for you guys on Python anyway. So you don't have to worry about installing it. You can just go ahead and import it and use it. It contains things called num NumPy arrays that are really similar to lists, which is why they're in this week. Only they have a few additional features that allow us to easily and computationally efficiently perform tasks. In fact, um, there's a way in Python code uh, to use C code with inside Python code. And NumPy is a module that a lot of its elements are actually using C code, which is a different programming language that's a little more efficient than Python um, and a little harder to use. Um, so luckily, you can benefit from all um, the efficiency of the C code without having to write it yourself through these modules. So why would you use NumPy arrays? If you try to multiply, subtract, or divide two Python lists, we would get an error. Um, if you added two lists together, that would create a new list with the second list at the end of the first list. That's how lists work in Python. Um, if we instead convert these lists to NumPy arrays, any numerical operator, say plus, uh, applies that operator between every pair of two items in the two lists at the same position. Um, yeah, so if you have NumPy arrays, um, this is very easy if I have two um, pieces of data, you can just add those two pieces of data. You don't need a for loop, you don't need anything else, and it, it, every pair of items it adds. Uh, um, it's not randomly, it's, it goes in uh, left to right, exactly. There's a lot more to NumPy, as we'll discover in the course of the notebook problems. Uh, knowing the basics will help in any scientific computing task you choose to undertake with your Python skills. Um, so I, I wouldn't introduce this if it wasn't important to do the notebook problems. Um, with a lot of the modules that we're using in terms of working with real scientific data, real scientists use modules like NumPy to help them do uh, data analysis operations. Um, so I I think the best way to work with it is to actually do the notebook problems. Um, there's a few using NumPy arrays, um, but you can think of it as a list that's a little fancier um, that has an additional uh, capability. The second module that we're going to work with during this week's notebook problems are plotting. Um, and we're going to use a module called matplotlib, and that will help us create charts and graphs analyzing data. Uh, any scientific discovery requires a presentation of complex data sets in a format that proves a certain hypothesis, and the most popular way to do this is to present data in a two-dimensional plot. In Python, we can do this with matplotlib. You've seen plots in math class. Uh, here's a function f of x equals x squared. Um, we could uh, compute this function using numpy arrays and the plot and show functions from matplotlib. So here, I've imported the plot and the show functions. I've also imported array from NumPy, so this is a NumPy array. And I've made the x-axis of our plot to be a NumPy array from 0 to 9, range 10. I've made the y x to the power of 2. Um, and because x is a NumPy array, instead of having to write a for loop to do this, I can just write it down, and then for every item in x, this, x, this takes x to the power of 2. Um, so this whole thing will be 0 to the power of 2, which is 0, 1 to the power of 2, which is 1, 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, 3 to the power of 2, which is 9, etc. Then I can use the matplotlib plot command, and then it puts on the x-axis x, 
the y-axis, y, and draw um, a curve between the two. And then show finally displays our plot. And the reason why these two commands are different is that actually we could plot a number of functions on the same plot. So you might not want to show it until you're done. When you show it, you say, the plot's done, I'm ready to go. So here's an example of that plot in Python. And we can see 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is close to 10, it's 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and then it gets too tall for me to point to. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're able to uh, quickly and efficiently um, plot something. And maybe you've seen graphing calculators, etc. Um, someone, uh, maybe just like you, many years ago, implemented the same software in a graphing calculator, probably using a different language than Python, um, but similar techniques. There are many functions and modules that Plotlib has to make plots clearer and more easy to interpret, including labeling the axes, what X and Y are, formatting the axes, giving the title to the plot, and more. We'll learn more about it during the course of the notebook problems and use it to produce um, plots of the sun as beautiful as the following, which you guys already made. What you didn't know was that behind the scenes of that module, that module is using Matplotlib to do all of this plotting. Um, and it's able to label the x-axis and the y-axis and put a title on the plot. And we'll learn how to do um, those various techniques during um, the final notebook problem. Here's another example of a plot, also um, done using Matplotlib. We have sunspot number on the y-axis, uh, the number of total sunspots. Um, and we have on the x-axis the year. And obviously, we're not at 2028 yet. This is a prediction. Um, so what we'll learn from our studies of the sun is that the sun has about an 11-year solar cycle. We can see that uh, the number of sunspots goes up, then down, then up, then down. Um, and these are typically about 11 years apart. So from 2000 to 2011, there's another peak. And then from 2012 to about 2023, there's another peak. Um, so the last thing before the live coding session is problem solving and debugging code issues. We already saw a little bit about asking for help. Um, everybody runs into problems in their code they were working with called bugs. These can either be things which Python produces an error for, or it can be that your program you're writing is simply not behaving as you expect and giving incorrect results. You can also have the case where your program isn't behaving as you expect, but the bugs in your head. So the program is doing exactly what it should be doing. You just misunderstood uh, what it should be doing. For example, we ran into a case today where um, we were searching for different images in January, February, March, April, May, and the code was searching for all the different wavelengths of images available. So there were four per month. Um, so if you expected there to be just one image, that's a bug in your head. The code's doing exactly what you told it to do. It's fetching all the images from that month. And the problem was what you expect. Um, so that can also be uh, double checking. Sometimes the code is right, and you think that there might be an incorrect result, but the code is really doing exactly the right thing. Um, debugging is the detective work required to track down the cause of those bugs and to fix issues in your code. For now, we're going to focus on using a combination of print, comment lines, and logic. That is, going through it in your head. Um, Later, we'll learn advanced debugging techniques, including testing, using a debugger, and logging within Python. Um, so print line. If you don't understand what the program's doing, put in a lot of prints. Print things out. Say help. Try to see what's going on. Another thing that you can do is comment things out or things in. If something's crashing, comment out that code, get it to run, and then comment it back in and try to fix the problem. But at least isolate where the problem's happening. Logic, um, I really recommend, especially if you're trying to do something complex, do it on your notebook paper first. Do a little example instead of doing it in a general case. So you, you have to print 
uh, the start and stop dates for months uh, over an entire year. Try to do it for just two months by hand on a piece of paper, see what it looks like, and then put it in your code to do it automatically. Um, if you can't even do it for one instance, one case by yourself, it's going to be really hard to write code that works correctly, um, that um, follows correct logic. Um, if the interpreter returns an error, read the error. It might even help to read it out loud. Look where the interpreter is telling you the problem originated. Keep in mind the problem could have actually originated someplace beforehand. For example, with the syntax error, any syntax error on the previous line could be the real culprit. Uh, one technique to try to track down the source of the error is trying to comment out lines of code, keeping in mind the additional errors those lines might cause. For example, if I comment out a, a variable definition, that's going to cause potentially another error later where it says, I don't know what that variable is. However, um, if the problem that Python was telling you is here, you comment out a variable, that problem goes away, um, then maybe that was caused by a syntax error having to do with the definition of that variable. If, you, if that causes an error later than your original problem, at least you've solved the first problem. And now you can work on the second problem. Um, the other class of bugs is if you get an unexpected output. For example, you expected your code to output something non-zero, but it is outputting zero. Try tracing every step of the way of the calculation, inspecting the values using print. So one example is the notebook problem that we're already working on, where the incorrect result is that this is in grayscale and we want it to be in a color. Um, so one idea as you're going through is to also simplify your code. So if you have code that's very hard to read, it's hard to figure out what's going on, consider renaming variables, consider creating more variables um, to try to simplify your debugging process. Um, with any kind of error or issue, try to collect as much information about which variables were in the code and what the types of objects that are involved. Um, use print helper type to interrogate the situation. Once you've figured out the cause of the issue, then you can fix it. This is a list of common programming errors, and they're in um, the textbook. So if you have an issue, you might want to go through and see if it could be one of these. Um, so one could be uh, if you're off by one. Um, so if you have something that's returning uh, one more, one fewer thing crashing. Um, something could be a scope misunderstanding, so misunderstanding which uh, level, if you define a variable, where that variable um, is, uh, can be reused. Um, make sure that all the variables being created in the code block of a loop um, aren't things that you want to save or keep track of the next iteration of the loop, because otherwise, every single time, it's going to be reset. If you ever iterate over a list, you shouldn't be modifying the list while you're iterating over it. Uh, one common error, which I've already seen a couple times um, today and in previous lab sessions, uh, and I've even done it myself in the live coding session, are name clashes. Uh, avoid names you've used elsewhere, colliding with standard names in Python, colliding with names of classes or objects or anything. So uh, whenever you name something, try to be very unique in your name. So it's a little bit better to make a longer variable that's very descriptive to guarantee that that won't happen. That can also be the case when you're having a problem, um, change the names of your variables if you think that this might be the source of the problem. Um, incorrect in indentation is a common problem. Um, I've seen this a couple times today. A function is meant to return something, but you haven't typed a return statement. If the function doesn't have a return, then it's going to be none. Um, a common error is using assignment, which is equal. Instead of testing for equality, equal, equal. Um, you can have typos or wrong capitalization. You could use an incorrect operator. And as I'm grading a couple of your notebook problems with the checking between minus 90 and 180, I'm seeing these errors a couple of times, maybe using less than instead of less than or equal to, or and when you mean or. Um, here in the uh, 
textbook, uh, and the slides is a little flow, flow chart uh, that was taken from Python for biologists. Um, so, <laughs> in this flow chart, let me turn off the lights so you can see a little better. So you can start here. Do you get an error when you run the code? Um, if yes, you can look at what type of error you get. Is it an attribute error, a syntax error, a type error, indentation error, IO error, key error? Uh, Python will literally print out what type of error. And in this flowchart, it has ideas to fix those errors. Um, if you don't get an error when you run the code, maybe it's just outputting something incorrectly, then you can check if the code uses loops or if statements. Um, here are some ideas of things to check um, if it uses loops and things to check if it uses if statements. And then finally, um, some final things to check. Um, so this or that checklist can try to get you unstuck. Even if it isn't the problem in your code, reviewing this list or this flowchart um, every time you get an error will help you um, remember ideas of what to try. If it isn't the problem this time, it could be a problem in the future. Um, okay, so in the last 30 minutes today, I'm going to do some more live coding coding DJing, and then we'll work on the labs. Um, so, let's try this. I'm going to close some other tabs. Okay. Um, so, I want to make a dictionary. What should I call my dictionary? Someone shout out an idea. Just shout it out. Nayeli, what should I call my dictionary? Name. Name. Okay. Um, so this is how I create a dictionary that has nothing in it. Um, so if I do names.keys, there are no keys. <laughs> I do names.values, there are no values. <laughs> I do names.items, there are no items. Nothing yet. Okay, now I want to actually put something in the, um, the names dictionary. What should I put in there? Whose name should I start out with? Ooh. My name, okay. I'll say Dr. Christine. <laughs> okay, and um, that's the key. And then I need a value for me. Um, I'll say very valuable. Okay, um, so we'll just start out with one. So now let's do names.keys. The key, Dr. Christine. Names.values, very valuable. Names.items, Dr. Christine, very valuable. A tuple here. Um, okay, so now if I want to access, using names, I want to access the item, the value corresponding to um, my name. What do I need to type after this? I want to access the value corresponding to Dr. Christine from the dictionary. Okay, like this? Parentheses. Okay. Quotation marks. Okay. So I'm going to put quotation marks around Dr. Christine. Okay. And what do you guys think that this will return? What do you think, Will? So, uh, 
Well, be very specific. What will it return? Okay. Very valuable. Okay. What if I try to do very valuable? What's that going to do? It won't work. Because that isn't a key. If I do names.keys, the only thing I can do in those brackets are things that are in names.keys. So if I try anything else, even if it's Christine, that isn't going to work. It has to be in names.keys. Anything in names.keys I can use in the brackets to get the values. So let's make a, uh, I'm going to update the dictionary, which I can do here. And I can actually assign uh, to a new key a new value. So what should my new key be? Another person's name. Whose name do we want? Give me a name of some celebrity. Pardon? I don't know who that is. Pardon? Uh, I do know who Linus Torvalds is, but some, something that everyone knows. What's some celebrity that everyone knows? Beyonce. Beyonce. Okay. Uh, Beyonce is a musician. Okay. So I, she's going to be the key, and then I'm going to set it equal to some value. Uh, so Nico didn't know who Beyonce was, uh, and some. Yeah, yeah. Some, uh, we'll, we'll do Linus Torvalds, too. We'll do two. So, Beyonce is a famous singer. Okay? Now, I'm going to do Linus Torvalds is a famous programmer. Okay. So, uh, if I do names.keys and raise your hand, um, what is that going to return? Someone in the front row. No, 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 you're good. So what are the names? Okay, let's see. Um, so we have Linus Torvald, Beyonce, and Dr. Christine. And if I wanted to see who Linus Torvald was, uh, how would I do that using names? Again, someone from the front row. Or, or Crystal. Here. So, brackets. So here's a bracket and then a quotation. Like that? Yeah. And who is he? Nice. Um, so, um, names dot items. I'll just show you what this is. So that is a list of tuples where we have the keys, comma, the values. And names dot values is going to give us just the values. Famous programmer, famous singer, very valuable. This right here, the names dot items is an array of tuples. Exactly. It's not. It doesn't just look like it. It is like it. If I print names. If we show names, that's our dictionary. So names is the dictionary. Names.keys gives us a list of the keys. Names.values gives us a list of the values. Names.items gives us a list of tuples. Key, comma, value. Key, comma, value. Key, comma, value. Um, 
So, if I wanted to use a for loop, um, say I don't tell you about names.items. You're not allowed to use that, names.items. Um, and you're also not allowed to use names.values. <laughs> um, I want you to use names.keys and a for loop to print every value in the dictionary. How do you think we might do that? Crystal, do you have an idea? Well, it's a for loop. What should I start out with for a for loop? What do you think, Sierra? What do I start out with for a for loop? Um, it's a for loop, so. What's the first word? So print, is that a for loop? Is print a for loop? No. Um, is hello a, a for loop? What's the, if we go to the textbook um, and look up a for loop, let's do for loop. So here's a for loop. What's the first word in a for loop? For. Okay. So let's start out with for. Okay. What's the next part of a for loop? What's up, Will? So we're going to say names is a variable. Okay. And then what's the next part of a for loop? Well, we'll figure it out. Um, so the next part would be the sequence. So what's the sequence? So I type dictionary? N pardon? In dictionary. Dictionary. Okay, so that's an idea. And then what do I do next? Colon. And then... Here's our code block. What should our code block be? Print. I'm, by the way, this isn't all correct, but we're going to try it out and see what happens. And then we're going to try to fix it. Well, see. We haven't, we haven't finished it yet. So uh, what should I put in print? Names.items. Okay. So let's try this and see what happens. Okay, name dictionary is not defined. So if you ever get name something is not defined, you can see if it's defined. What is dictionary? We don't know what dictionary is. So we're not allowed to use dictionary. The sequence has to be something that is defined. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, the other thing is with a for loop, uh, back to our for loop. Whoa. Yeah, it's really big now, right? Okay. <laughs> so, for variable in sequence. So our for loop is also missing the in. Um, that was another problem. So we have two problems so far in our code. One, the sequence we gave dictionary doesn't mean anything to Python. Python doesn't know what dictionary is. I can't type dictionary. Python has no idea what dictionary is. So your sequence has to be defined. The other thing our for loop was missing was an in. The in needs to be in the for loop. Um, the last thing is the variable should be something brand new. The for loop should never use a variable that's already defined because otherwise you're going to run into scoping issues. If I define x and then I use x in my for loop, it's going to be really confusing in my code. This variable in a for loop should always be a brand new thing that you've never used before in your code, ever. Um, and then we have our code block, which was close 
to being correct, um, but not quite either. So let's go back and try to fix this a little bit. So now we have the in, um, which I guess I typed as well. So we need a brand new variable name. Brand new. Never used it before in our code. X. It can also be X. So we'll try X, because someone shouted that out. And then we need something that is defined, a sequence that is defined. Um, so uh, names is a dictionary. It's not a sequence. So if I try for x in names, we'll see if this works. I don't think it should. Let's say print x. Oh, it actually does work. This might be something new with Python 3. <laughs> so uh, apparently for x in names, that automatically is the same as names.keys. Um, so you can, uh, you, you can use either of these things, um, which I didn't even know. That's something new um, in, in Python that I did not know. Um, so for x in names, we can do that, but that actually isn't the whole dictionary. Um, for x in names.keys is a little clearer because names is usually this whole dictionary. Um, okay, so we'll do for x in names.keys. Now we want the value that corresponds to each name. How do I get the value um, from names? Pardon? What'd you say, Nayeli? Uh, names dot value. Uh, names dot value. You think? And then what else? Anything else? Pardon? The other parentheses? Uh, no. Um, so before, how we got the value of Beyonce? from names. How did we do that before? How did we get the value of Beyonce from names? So if I want to get the value of Beyonce from names, what do you think, Nayeli? Yeah. So, so let's go back. Let's see. Something like this. This is how we got, well, we don't know what Christine is, but Dr. Christine. This is how we got the value of Dr. Christine. You have to uh, print uh, the names and then the variables. Okay, so how, how should I, what's next? Uh, we're back in names, and then X, and then we're back to X. And I think, is there parentheses there? Or there's no parentheses? Uh, there's no parentheses there. 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 Okay, so famous programmer, famous singer, very valuable. Um, so again, if you have a key, how you get the value of the key from the dictionary is not names.values. Names.values without any parentheses doesn't even do anything because it's a function. Names.values gives you a list of all the values, but it says nothing about Beyonce or Christine or Linus Torvalds there. Um, with a dictionary, to get the value of a key, you type the name of the dictionary, the square brackets, and the key that you want to get the, the value of the key. Um, so let's do something with lists instead. So uh, let's do keys, uh, names, lists. Um, how would I get, and raise your hand again here, and I hopefully have someone who hasn't answered a question yet. So if you haven't answered a question yet, you can get out of the more complicated questions by trying to answer this one. Um, so how would I get Beyonce out of names list? What do you think, Momo? Um, make a guess. I'll type a character and we can see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we'll
will do nothing. I can't. All right, that didn't work. All right, let's try something else. Um, so make another guess. And if your guess is closer, I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> so I'll give you a hint. It's either going to involve parentheses or it's going to involve uh, braces or it's going to involve brackets. And almost always, if you're trying to get something from something else, it's going to involve parentheses, braces, or brackets, and you have to decide which one. You think brackets, okay. So let's do brackets. We're on the right track with that hint. Very good. And what do I want to put in the brackets? Let me print names again, uh, and I'll, well, names, that, names list is what I want. So here's names list, and what do I want to put in these brackets? to get this to return Beyonce. What would you guess? Uh, you think to put Beyonce there. Let's try that. This is a list, not a dictionary. So that's, oops, two braces, two brackets. So now what does that say? Can you read that out loud? So what do you think we should put instead of a string? Oh, um, the, number. the number. Okay, so what number should I put? One. One. Okay. Beyonce! Okay, now, uh, what if I want it, let me print out the names list again. Uh, what if I want it to instead be Linus Torvalds? Then zero. So again, it depends on the type of thing that you're working with, whether it's a list, a tuple, or a dictionary, what you can do. And if you're unclear about what you're working with, you can look at this, and it says names list is a list. Um, here it is. Here's how long it is. Here's a couple of things that you can do with it. Um, if we're instead dealing with a dictionary, which is names, um, then now it says it's a dictionary. Um, so here's even it gives an example of um, you know, various things that we can do with a dictionary. So lists and dictionaries are the basics of, of Python that we're going to be working with. Lists, dictionaries, and the for loops. So if you don't have that yet, that's going to be something that you need to review and review and review. And one thing that... Um, One thing that can help you review it is by just opening up in Python Anywhere your console and starting to type stuff. So if you know I need to review for loops, lists, and dictionaries, um, you can do this in the notebook or you can do it here and keep on defining new things, trying to do new things, access them until you for yourself get what's going on. Um, so let's I'm going to define a list of um, favorite foods. Um, so how would I make a new list of favorite foods? What would be the character that I start out with? And I'm going to start with someone who hasn't spoken yet. Who hasn't spoken yet? It's you. So I'm going to start out with a bracket, and then uh, what next? Let's say my favorite foods are avocado, um, banana, and pizza. But what do I type next? Avocado, like that? And then what do I do next? Comma? Pizza. And then what do I do? Bracket. Close bracket. Okay, let's try that out. 
Okay. Um, so we have a problem here. Yeah. Uh, that's right. So uh, where should I put the quotation marks? And after pizza. Okay, let's see what that is. So how long do you think favorite foods should be, since I have three favorite foods? Since I have three favorite foods, I'm going to use the Lang function to check how long favorite foods is. How long do you think it'll be? Great. So let's see how long it is. It's only one long. So we have some mistake there. Um, so I think you had an idea of how to fix the mistake before. How do I fix it, Crystal? Um, That's right. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, so now, if I wanted to get out bananas, uh, what number would I put in there? One. Okay. And what would happen if I do favorite foods three? Good job. Okay. So now, if I want to do, and this will be kind of the last thing that I do, um, again, the live coding is a review for some. Um, we'll be able to do some more advanced stuff also later in the week with the scientific stuff. Um, but as well, these basics are things that even advanced people screw up sometimes. They think that a dictionary is a list. They misunderstand um, what's going on and that causes bugs in their code. So uh, really getting lists and dictionaries down will help you do um, correct coding no matter where you are. Um, so now if I want to do a for loop, that prints out every one of my favorite foods. I'm going to ask the back this time. So how do I start a for loop? Yeah. Start with four. What's the next thing that we need in a for loop? So what should I call my variable? What do you think? You think I. OK, we can call it I. Is I usually try to make it very descriptive. So I would do for Christine favorite food or something like that. The the I is a generic word for variable for for loops. Yes. So for me I is That's right. Um, the problem is if I have two for loops for I in range ten, for for I in range ten print I. <laughs> so why we use the yeah, that, that can be something really confusing. So that's why sometimes it's a little easier to be a little more descriptive. But we can do for I and favorite foods. So let's, let's do favorite, fa for I in favorite foods. And then what comes after that? My for loop experts in the back. <laughs> Pardon? Is it a comma? Let's try a comma. It's a colon. Okay, good. And now, how do I, how do I print the food? Print I? Yeah. So I think already there were a couple misunderstandings about lists and dictionaries. You might still have misunderstandings, but try to create new dictionaries, um, try to create new lists, try to iterate over them, and when you get how to do that, that's when you can move on to the exercises. So doing the notebook problems doesn't make sense unless you can create a new list for yourself, iterate over the list, create a new dictionary for yourself, access every value in the dictionary, access every key in the dictionary. And these are all exercises that um, it's helpful if you don't understand what's going on in Python, you can try to guess what it should do and push return and see what happens.
So guessing is never a bad thing. And again, one of the things that can help us guess or jog our memory is to think, uh, if you want to get something from something else, you probably need a bracket, a parenthesis, or a brace. Dots work too sometimes. That's a good point. Or a dot if you want to get something from something else. So you can try to decide which one you need. If you don't know which one, you can try to guess. See what happens. See if it works, if it doesn't. If it doesn't work, um, you can try to look up in the textbook or try something else, depending. Um, with our code, when you're a professional software engineer, sometimes you can make a mistake and it screws up the internet for the entire world. In our class, if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. Um, so you decide which one. In addition, if you want to def define a list, a tuple, or a dictionary, you're going to use these two. Um, so those are kind of the basic building blocks of Python. So if you find yourself stuck, try that. Um, then uh, for for loops, it's always going to have four in it. Um, be very unique in your variable names. Um, and make sure you're not reusing things that are used elsewhere. If it's something that should be changing, don't use something that should not be changing. Um, so those are some ideas. We're going to go back and keep working on the lab. If you're still confused about this, do the exercises. Redo the ones from yesterday. You don't have to do the lab quite yet. Get this straight in your head. If this was super easy for you, it's now time for you to do the advanced lab stuff. And later in the week, there'll be a capstone exercise where we're actually um, predicting solar weather, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll get there. And uh, in addition, if there's still kind of issues with the basics, on Thursday we'll have another session, uh, not with the whole class, um, but just for people having trouble with the basics. Uh, and we'll have a separate session for people who want some more advanced knowledge. Um, so we won't all have to be uh, at this level. And the other thing is that if you're confused, feel free to ask a friend. There's a lot of people in this class that some people are experts on for loops, other people are experts on dictionaries. Um, but try to ask someone, say, I know I need a dictionary. I'm using parentheses. What's going wrong here? Um, and you'll get it. Um, are there any questions or requests for for loops, lists, or dictionaries? <laughs>